Welcome to the Best Robotics Competition. My name is Sandeep and this is the second video in the series of tutorial videos on using Simulink to program your best robot. In this video, I'm going to provide you with an introduction to Simulink and show you how to build a simple Simulink model using the blocks from the VEX library. So what is Simulink? Simulink is a graphical modeling environment. What does that mean? Well, in any programming language like C++ or BASIC, you need to type out lines of code in order to create a program. In Simulink, you will drag in graphical objects known as blocks in order to create your program. You can test this program in Simulink. Then, you can have Simulink automatically generate C code and download that C code onto your robot. In Simulink, a program is called a Simulink model. And the file extension of a Simulink model is .slx or in older versions of Simulink, it is .mdl. I mentioned that Simulink is a graphical modeling environment. So what does modeling mean? Modeling is taking something from the real world, such as a bouncing ball, and create a computer representation of it, perhaps with the intent of seeing how it would bounce if it were to be dropped on a different planet. In our case, we want to model the brain of our robot. What will our robot do when we give it certain commands? We will create a model that defines the actions of our robot. We can test out our robot on the computer before we can actually download the program to the robot. With this model, we can see if the robot will actually turn right when we tell it to turn right rather than turn left and falling off the table. By testing the actions in the model, we save ourselves from possibly having to glue the robot back together if it does something we didn't expect. Once we are satisfied that our model works, we can generate the code that will go on to the robot. Since that program will be generated from the model that we created and tested, we can feel rather confident about how the robot will act once it has been programmed. I also mentioned that you will be dragging in blocks in order to create your program. So what are Simulink blocks? Blocks are graphical representations of the commands that you will give to Simulink. Each block performs a task. For example, in the four blocks shown here, the add block will actually give you the summation of the values A and B. The variables A and B themselves are represented by two constant blocks which will give you a constant value. In our case here, A is 1 and B is also 1. And then the block which says C equals A plus B is actually a display block which will display the summation result of A and B. Now let's see how to launch Simulink and the VEX library. So here is my desktop. As we saw earlier in the installation video, Simulink runs on top of another program called MATLAB. In order to open Simulink, we need to first open MATLAB. So when I double click on this icon on my desktop, it will actually launch MATLAB and then also launch this best VEX menu. As we saw in the first video, you can launch the VEX library from this menu by clicking on this button which says open the best robotics library. It takes a few seconds when you try to launch it for the very first time. Now here is the best robotics library. This library contains the blocks that you will need to build and simulate your best program. It contains the driver blocks and also blocks for doing math and logical operations. It also has the utilities library, which is another sub library next to the math and the logical library, which contains a few blocks which will be helpful when you're creating your best robot. We will talk a little bit about these blocks later on in this video. Now to go back to the top library, click on this button which says up to parent and it takes us back to the, the main library window. 
So here is the algebraic equation that will be used to build a Simulink model. Before we go to Simulink, let's observe this equation closely. If you were to pseudocode this equation as a textual program, you can think of each operator as a math function. In Simulink, a function will be represented as a block. So, an add function will be represented by a sum or add block. Keep this in your mind as we go ahead to create the Simulink model. To begin creating a new Simulink model, go to Best Vex menu and click on Open a New Model button. When you click on it, a new window opens and this is where we will place all the blocks that you want to have as part of your program. Notice at the top of the window that it has been given a default name. For now, let's keep this name. Later on, I'll show you how you can rename this model file. Again, for understanding Simulink semantics and workflow, we are going to solve this equation. As a reference, let's note down what was the algebraic equation that we are going to create the Simulink model for. In Simulink, I can add a note anywhere within my Simulink window. When I double click, an edit box appears. And here I can start typing my algebraic equation. And now I have actually created a note or a comment if you're familiar with other textual programming languages within my Simulink window. In Simulink, a note or a comment is called an annotation. Now let's format the font size of this annotation so that we can see it more clearly. Now before we proceed, let's quickly take a look at what are the various math operations in this equation. As a first step, let's start with the square operation. To find the square operation, let's go to the best robotics library again. And here, since we know the square operation is a math operation, let's go to the math sublibrary. When I double click on this, I will see all the blocks within the math operation sublibrary. And here, if I look closely, I will find a block that says math function blocks. Let's drag this block and drop it into the Simulink model window. Now I can resize this which says math function block and then move it around anywhere I want using the left button on my mouse. Now let's double click on this block. When I double click on this block, it opens up a function block parameters window and here it has a description of what this block does and it has some parameters that I can change as I desire. In my case since I want a square function I'm going to explore to see if this function block has a square function and as you can see here there is a square function I choose this option and I say apply and when I do this you can see that the function block automatically updated the display to show you the square operation. Hit OK to close this window and now you have the square function ready. Just for better reference, let's go ahead and change the name of this block to square. I can do that by clicking on the existing name and when I do that, it lets me edit the existing name. I delete the existing text and then type square. Similar to this, let's add the blocks for subtraction, multiplication and addition. To do that, I'll go to my VEX library here and then choose the blocks for subtract operation and drag and drop it here. Similarly, I have a block for addition called add block. So I drag and drop that block here. And then I also have a product block. So let's look at these blocks closely. In the subtract block, there are two notches on the left side of the block and there is an arrow head at the right side of the block. These are called ports of a block. The ones that you see on the left side are the input ports of a block and the one that you see on the right side is called the output port of a block. 
ports are nothing but similar to arguments of a function. So these are similar to the input arguments of a function, and this is nothing but the output argument of a function. By default, the subtract block has two input ports. However, you can actually change the ports to be more than two. And how do you do that? By double clicking on this block, and within the block parameter window, you can change the number of inputs by adding more pluses or minuses to the list. So you see when I added another plus and another minus sign to the end of that list, it added more input ports to the block. In our case, since we have one subtraction between two terms, let's go ahead and have two input arguments. Similarly, the addition block will have two input arguments and one output argument. The product block will have three arguments because we have two product symbols between three terms in our algebraic equation. I double click on this block and I change the number of inputs to be three in this case. Now, the last operation in the algebraic equation is square root. Now let's go back to the math library and here you should be able to find the square root block. Let's drag and drop this block here. Now, the square root block will just have one input, which is the value b. Thus, we have added all the operation blocks that we need for this equation. Now, let's see what are the variables and constants in our equation. 2 and 3 are the constant values in our equation, whereas a and b are the variables. For the variables, the values can be varying. So theoretically speaking, they can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. For practical purposes, let's say their limits go from negative 127 to positive 127, similar to a VEX gamepad's limits. Now back to the Simulink model, we saw that 2 and 3 are the constant values. So how do I actually add constant values to my Simulink model? Let's go to the library and hit the up button to go back to the parent library window. And here, let's go to the utilities library block. From here, we can choose the constant block, drag and drop it into our model. So the constant block is the one that will let us actually provide a value of 2 and 3 to our Simulink model. In our case, since we have two constant values, we would need two constant blocks. I could either go back to my VEX library and drag and drop another constant block or I could actually right click on this block, drag and drop it and create a copy of that block. Now let's go ahead and change the values of, of these constant blocks. Now for the variables A and B, we cannot use the constant blocks since the values of A and B are going to be varying. So for that, we are going to be using something called the variable input block, which is again in the utilities library. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this block into our window. And since we have two variables, let's create a copy of this block. Now, let's go ahead and change the name of these blocks as A and B. Now, we have added the blocks for our constant values and also for our variables A and B. Now, let's start putting together this equation. The leftmost term in this equation is a square. So let's go ahead and place a and the square function next to each other. Now the output of block a will be actually the input to the square block and then the output of the square block will essentially be a square. How do we feed in the output from block a as input to the square block? So in order to do that we need to draw a line between these two ports. How do we do that? When I go close to the output port of block A, I see a crosshair, click on the left button on my mouse, and then drag and release it when the line has been connected. 
Now, even when I move this block around, the connected line stays intact. Thus, I have provided the output from block A as input to the square block. Now let's look at the second expression in the equation, 3 times A times B. So we have the 3 constant block. We have A value coming from this block. And then we have a block for the variable B. And also we have a block for the product operation. Now let's go ahead and draw a line from the block 3 as input to product block. This line in Simulink is called a signal. Now, to draw the signal line between A and the second input port of the product block, I could either make a duplicate of the A block or I could connect the input port to an existing block by connecting to an existing line that is coming out from the A block. And then the third input would be the value of B. And the final term in this equation is square root of B. So I have the square root block, and then the input to this square root block would be the value of B coming from the variable input block B. Thus, the output coming out from these three blocks are the three terms in the equation. Now let's go ahead to the next step, which is using the subtract and the add block. So the first step would be to use the subtract block between the terms a squared and 3 times a times b. So the output coming out from the square block will be fed as the input, first input, which is the positive term. And then the negative term is 3 times a times b, which is coming out from the product block. Thus, we have subtracted 3 times a times b from a square. And then the output from that subtraction is fed as the, add, as the input to the add block. And the second input to that block would be the output of the square block. Finally, the output coming out from the add block is nothing but our output y. Thus, we have actually created a Simulink model representing this algebraic equation. In order to observe what is the output coming out as y from this Simulink model, we will use something called a display block in the utilities library under simulation output section. Drag and drop this display block into your Simulink model and then when you bring it close to the unconnected line, which is represented by this red dotted arrow, it will automatically connect to the input port of the display block. Now, we can actually observe the output y from within this display block. Before we move ahead, please note that the constant 2 block was never used in our Simulink model. Since we use the square function block, for attaining the a square term. So since we didn't use it, let's go ahead and delete it. I can select this block and then hit the delete button to get rid of it. Now, to save this model, I can either hit the save button, which is right here, or I can go to the file menu and click on the save button here. Since we discussed earlier that we will save this model with a different name, let's go ahead and use the Save As option. Here, you can save the file with a new name. Let's go ahead and change this to Algebraic Equation and hit Save. Now, you can see that the name of the file has been updated to Algebraic EQN. Now let's go ahead and try to simulate this model within the Simulink environment. To simulate or run this model, let's hit on the play button right here. When I hit the play button, Simulink starts simulating this model. And now you can see that there is a value within the display block. How do I change this value within the display block, which is the y output from my algebraic equation. 
To do that, let me go ahead and double click on the A block, which is the variable input block. When I do that, it provides me with the slider bar. Let me resize this window. And then I double click on the B block and it again provides me with the second slider for the B variable. Let's go ahead and see what happens when I change the A and B values. So you can see that as I keep changing my A and B values during runtime, my display value actually changes. So using the simulation mode, I can determine the value of Y for different values of A and B. Now, to stop the simulation, let me go ahead and click on the stop button right next to the play button. And this will stop the simulation. Now you can see that when I resized my Simulink window, I can't see all the blocks at the same time. In order to be able to fit all these blocks into my current view of the window, I can hit the space bar and this will resize all the blocks to fit within the given window space. Now let me go ahead and close these sliders and save the model. We have thus created a Simulink model for this algebraic equation and also simulated the Simulink model and seen the output of Y for different values of A and B. Now let me go ahead and close this model and see how to actually access this Simulink model that we saved from within MATLAB. So I'll go ahead and bring up the MATLAB desktop window that we saw earlier. And now, here you can see that my file algebraic eqn.slx is saved in this directory. You can actually browse other folders from this address bar. To open our model, we can double click on this .slx file. There we go. Let me close this again. And if you want to actually make a copy of this file, you can right click on it and choose the copy option. Or you can even cut the file and paste it to a different location as you desire. This window here in the MATLAB desktop is called current folder. From this window, you can access any file that is saved on your computer. You can also manage files from within this window, similar to how you would use the Windows Explorer. Thus, we have seen how to use the current folder in the MATLAB desktop to actually access and manage our Simulink models. That brings us to the end of this video that gave you a quick introduction to Simulink. In the next video, you will see how to build a Simulink model specifically for your best robot and then simulate your best robot model within the Simulink environment. Thank you.